Hello, wonderful person, this is Anton. And this right here is a map I've been meaning to use for a very, very long time. This is a map showing us approximately one year of earthquakes on planet Earth. But it's a map that shows it to us in three dimensions. Created by this wonderful person, Rakula Nikola, a cartographer from Switzerland who's created a lot of these in the past. Now, as always, the link for this is in the description below. But I guess what I personally find fascinating here is that you can actually zoom into pretty much any location on planet Earth and then investigate each of these earthquakes, discovering the approximate depth, the total magnitude and the approximate location of this particular earthquake, allowing us to sort of visualize where all of this happens at all times. Now, one thing about this map is that things here are a little bit exaggerated. As a matter of fact, the depth is about eight times larger than it is in reality. So in other words, if it says the earthquake was about 100 kilometers in depth, it's going to look like it's 800 kilometers. And this was done for artistic reasons, just to make this a little bit easier to see visually. But nevertheless, the map itself is really, really good at presenting this information. And it just so happens that a perfect study came out when I finally got to use this map and to showcase it to you. The study that you can also find in the description below. And this time the study uncovered something that's a little bit difficult to explain the deepest earthquake ever detected. Discovered at a depth of about 751 kilometers, or about 467 miles. So deep as a matter of fact, that barely anything was detected on the surface of the planet, even though the earthquake itself was pretty powerful. It was 7.9 in magnitude, which is considered to be pretty high. And so let's talk a little bit more about why this is actually a mystery that's extremely difficult to solve, and just about the general idea of these deep earthquakes and how we believe they're usually formed. So first of all, when it comes to earthquakes, we have a pretty good understanding of how exactly they occur and what exactly makes them happen. In a nutshell, it's usually because of some sort of a massive mineral somewhere deep in the ground. And here, usually everything is caused because of the plate tectonics, as a lot of different plates of planet Earth move around, and as they either interact with one another, or sometimes go on top of one another, one of them can start reaching extreme pressures. And at some point, all of the minerals that it's made out of can actually crack completely, releasing a tremendous amount of energy and producing the earthquakes. And so one of the major components here is the ability for the mineral to crack. So basically something has to break for the earthquake to appear. Interestingly, one of the reasons we are not entirely sure how it works on other planets is because of the components or minerals that they're made out of. So for example, if certain minerals are a lot more brittle, if they break easier, chances are, well, first of all, the crust is not going to be as strong and the earthquakes are probably going to be extremely minuscule. On the other hand, if the crust is extremely strong, it can maybe potentially produce extremely powerful earthquakes, but can also block the plate tectonics completely. So in other words, the composition of minerals is extremely important in determining what happens on the surface of the planet. But the thing about minerals is that, well, first of all, they're very diverse and they depend on the components or the elements on the inside. But second of all, they also change with pressure and temperature. So for example, here on planet Earth, the mineral responsible for basically snapping and releasing all of this energy is this green mineral known as olivine. This is the primary component of the upper mantle of planet Earth, and there's quite a lot of it on the inside. And pretty much most of the earthquakes on planet Earth, as you can see from this map, happen in this upper mantle because of the snapping of olivine as it experiences pressure from, for example, two plates colliding, or for example, when one of the plates experiences pressure from elsewhere. But there's another way some of the earthquakes happen, and that's when one mineral transitions into another mineral. And that's something that starts happening once we start going deeper and deeper into the Earth's mantle. So here, up to about 100 kilometers in depth, it's still olivine and it's still relatively brittle. But once we reach depths of 100 to maybe 300 kilometers, that's when another factor comes into play. And let's use this beautiful model of the eclair with cream filling because, well, I like eclairs and because that's basically the best footage I could find to essentially demonstrate what happens at higher depths. A lot of the liquids present in rocks, especially liquids in various pores, start to get squeezed out and under these conditions, the rocks acquire more brittleness and so they actually can break even easier. And because of this, there are quite a lot of earthquakes up to about 400 kilometers because of the transition of essentially olivine with a little bit of liquids on the inside into some other rocks that have almost no liquids, it sort of creates another opportunity for earthquakes to occur. 
Even though at these conditions, at these pressures and temperatures, the olivine itself should technically no longer be brittle. And so up to about 400 kilometers, these two explanations sort of make sense. But the thing is, if we go back to this map and we look at some of the deeper earthquakes, we'll actually discover something a little bit more unusual. Like for example, this one right here was at a depth of 560 kilometers. This one here was 668 kilometers. And as you can see, there are quite a lot of these deep earthquakes happening right here near Fiji. You can also use this earthquake catalog from USGS to try to discover some of the other deep earthquakes with at least one recent earthquake happening right here once again in Fiji at a depth of about 605 kilometers. And so these deeper earthquakes, they seem to be pretty common, but they're a lot more difficult to explain because at this point, the rocks become way, way less brittle. And this takes us to the next explanation. So at this depth of about 400 kilometers or approximately 250 miles, the beautiful green olivine starts to transform into another mineral. It transforms into what's known as the Watsleyite. And so once the atoms here rearrange, it becomes this bluish mineral, which changes its structure, changes its density, and thus can cause even more earthquakes at some of the bigger depths. Usually this transition happens really, really suddenly, and this sudden transition from one mineral to another can usually cause another earthquake. And once we start going deeper, so here we're talking about 500 kilometers, this transforms into some other stuff. For example, one of the common minerals found at these depths is something known as ring woodite. So once again, very, very similar composition, but extremely different crystal structure because of the pressures and temperatures. And once you keep going deeper and deeper, even that starts transforming into, for example, periclase at a depth of about 680 kilometers. And so in theory, all of these deep earthquakes can be caused by the transition of one mineral to another as the plates move around and as they sort of push each other deeper and deeper into the Earth's mantle. Although the actual true cause of these deep earthquakes is still not well understood. But that's up to a depth of about 680 kilometers. The newly discovered earthquake was even deeper than that. Here, the measurement suggested the depth of about 750 kilometers. And so what exactly caused this earthquake to occur is not a question anyone can answer right now. Although I guess that's not entirely true. There's at least one potential explanation. First of all, olivine could be just extremely unpredictable and might even have a chance to stay as olivine and not transform into anything for much longer than we initially thought. Whereas in some other cases, maybe olivine has a chance to skip a few phases and to just transform into its last stage right away. So it's still not clear to us, mostly because we don't really have anything like this happening here on the surface. So obviously we have, for example, water turning into ice, with both substances then having very different properties, but this is very, very different from what we are seeing inside the planet itself. Here we're talking about pretty much exactly the same element, transitioning into very different stages with very different properties, with some of them being a little bit more difficult to predict than others. So for example, one potential explanation here is once again with different plate tectonics and specifically with convergent plates. Let's say one of these plates, this one right here, has quite a lot of olivine located right here and it's being pushed lower and lower into the Earth's mantle. But it could just happen that in this particular location, the mantle is just a little bit cooler than it should be for the olivine to transition into its other state. The pressure is correct, but the temperature is not. And so if we use the water as analogy here, it's kind of like having water boil much, much sooner at lower temperatures if you go into lower pressures, for example, on top of a mountain. And so maybe in some conditions, for example, in those places in Fiji, the temperatures are just not high enough for the olivine to transition. And so as the plates push some of this olivine lower and lower, at some point it's going to reach the area where both the temperature and the pressure is just enough for it to suddenly transition into a new stage, which then suddenly releases a huge amount of energy, creating a powerful earthquake that we can detect from very far away. And that's one potential explanation to that extremely deep earthquake. The earthquake in the regions of the mantle where we really don't expect anything to break or to create any kind of earthquake whatsoever. At these depths, at 750 kilometers, the actual mantle should be very, very liquid-like. It becomes this very viscous, liquidy substance that shouldn't really break anything and should not produce any earthquakes. And so that's one of the potential explanations for this record-breaking deep earthquake. But obviously nobody knows if this is exactly what happened and it would be very difficult to find out. As a matter of fact, even detecting this earthquake required extremely sensitive instruments, not knowing this was happening on the surface. 
And the only reason all of this was even detected was because of this extremely sensitive network of earthquake detectors located in Japan. The network known as HiNet. And this is the world's most powerful earthquake detector. Mostly because for Japan this is a huge hazard and so they always have to be prepared for any potential earthquake. And so a pretty intriguing discovery from within the planet Earth. But I guess one other discovery out of all of these papers and all of these studies is the fact that, well, the boundary inside planet Earth doesn't seem to be a boundary at all. Or in other words, even though we generally imagine planet Earth to have these relatively well-defined parts and layers within it, it doesn't seem to be like this at all. It really looks like all of these layers on the inside are extremely diverse and sometimes don't even have a very definitive start or end points. And so all of this is a somewhat simplified version of what the planet looks like on the inside. The reality, as always, is a lot more complicated. But once we learn more about the internal structures of planet Earth, or discover something else unusual about earthquakes, I'll make sure to follow this up with another video. In the meanwhile, check out all of the relevant links, including this beautiful map in the description below, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else. Maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership, or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.